here because the outside world rejects you. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another video. Recently, we've been covering more moments from the early days of the Ninja Turtles. These are moments from the original black and white comics published by Mirage Publishing back in the 80s and 90s. So the very first Ninja Turtles that ever existed, even before the original cartoon. And yeah, there seems to be just so many cool moments to discuss from these old stories. And today we're gonna jump into another one, the very first time the Ninja Turtles encountered Utrams. So those little brain creatures that that look like Krang. How did the turtles cross paths with these things? What was it like when they first met them? We're going to discuss all of that and much more in today's video. This moment sort of kicks off during the closing events of issue 2 of the Mirage comics, so the issue where the Turtles met and defeated Baxter Stockman and his Mouser robots. They met April O'Neil for the first time in that as well. We did a whole video on it, I'll leave a pinned comment for that video here in the comments section. But this next part that we're going to discuss today starts off with what's happening with Splinter while the Turtles were dealing with all that, and this is told in issue 3. We see that Splinter was back at the lair while the Turtles dealt with the Mouser and Baxter Stockman. He was reading a book when out of nowhere he began to hear strange sounds coming from the walls of the lair. At first he thought it was just the turtles returning home from their mission, but then we see what's actually going on. It's the mousers eating through the walls. They get to Splinter, likely because he's a rat and that's what they're programmed to go after. Initially there's only four mousers in the room with him and Splinter tries to fight them off. One does end up biting him in the leg pretty bad, making him bleed, but he is able to defeat them. Splinter then decides to leave the lair because he believes that more could be on the way. He looks outside of the lair and you see that his instincts are correct. There are more coming. He tries to get away but they begin to surround him. He jumps up to grab some pipes. That way he can crawl over them but the pipes break off of the wall as he tries to hang on to them and he falls down to the ground hitting his head on the floor. This dazes him pretty bad. He's pretty much all but done for and begins to accept his fate but then abruptly the mousers turn around and begin to leave. We are seeing the moment here when the Ninja Turtles villain, Baxter Stockman, turned on the self-destruction program in his lab. When Baxter had did this in issue 2, the Mousers began following a new program. Instead of going after rodents, their new program was to go back to the lab and destroy the Ninja Turtles, who are currently there at the moment. So yeah, that's what we're seeing here. Anyways, back with Splinter, now that the Mousers have left, we see that he's still injured from the fall that he took and from the bite earlier that he got from one of the Mousers, so he can't walk. He thinks that the Mousers may come back, so he begins to drag himself to safety. As he does so, he is found by two men. Two men wearing gear with the initials TCRI on it. It appears that these men just think that he's a regular overgrown rat. That the mousers left half dead. The size of Splinter doesn't really seem to phase these guys. One of the men starts talking about putting it, Splinter, out of its misery. But then Splinter begins to plead with them not to shoot as he passes out. Now seeing Splinter talk like this does surprise these guys. So yeah, for some reason Splinter's size doesn't seem to get these guys' attention. But the fact that he can speak makes the difference. Because of this, the two guys start inspecting Splinter. They say that he's lost a lot of blood and that they should take him back to the infirmary back at their TCRI building. Later on, we see that we're now at the TCRI building. We see the men that helped save Splinter's life and it looks like they just finished up working on him. They let him recover in a bed as they go to take a break. We see that Splinter eventually wakes up. He sneaks away from his room and he starts going through the halls of this building. He notices that the building is unusually quiet. There's there's no one in there, except for one room where he hears people talking. He peeks his head into the doorway to see who's in the room. What he sees shocks him. It's revealed that the men who helped him earlier and saved his life are not human. Those were just like exoskeleton bodies, and they were really these brain-like creatures that you see there, which we will eventually learn are called the Utrams. This is the debut of the species, and a big moment in Ninja Turtles lore. These are the creatures that would eventually inspire the legendary character of Krang in a different version of the Turtles that would come out a couple years later. But yes, for Splinter, this is truly a shocking moment. He is stunned at what he's seen. We next jump over to the Ninja Turtles in April. We see that it's after they have defeated Baxter Stockman and the Mousers, and they are now heading home. They drop off April at the surface, and as she leaves, she tells them that the sewers will likely be crawling with cops after the whole Mouser incident from issue 2, so that their home is probably no longer safe. The Turtles tell her thanks, and that Splinter will know what to do. The Turtles still think Splinter is at home. We see that April does give them her number as they part ways, and the Turtles end up going home. But as they arrive, they see 
see that their lair has been broken into by the mousers, and they also see that there's blood on the floor, Raphael snaps. He says they should have killed Baxter when they had the chance. Then it occurs to him that Baxter is probably still at the lab, so he insists on going back to kill him now. Leonardo holds him back and tells him to get a grip, but Raphael tells Leonardo that Splinter could be hurt, and you hear Donatello say that we gotta find him. Leonardo tells them that he knows, but that the sewers will soon be swarming with people, and if they get caught, they won't be able to do Splinter any good. He begins to lay out a plan. He tells Michelangelo to pack their important belongings, and then he tells Donatello to go keep a lookout for the cops. He then tells Raphael to go help Michelangelo, but Raph isn't hearing it. He says, I'm gonna go look for Splinter, and we see that Raphael runs off. Leonardo yells at him that he better be back in 10 minutes. Shortly after, we see that the turtles are now on the surface. They're in an alley, and we see that Raphael does rejoin the team here. We'll cover what he was up to in a separate video. Leonardo scorns him for a bit, but then they move on to their next course of action. They go to a payphone and they call April to see if she can hide them at her place. They do get a hold of her, and she does come to pick them up in her van. Eventually, after some close calls with the police out on the road, the Turtles and April make it to April's place. This is the first time that we see that she lives above the second time around shop. This shop has made appearances in other versions of the Ninja Turtles that have come out after, but yeah, this is the first time we ever see it. The Turtles go into her apartment and begin to settle down for the night. One of the Turtles even asks for a beer, but before April is even able to go get it, you see that the Turtles are so exhausted that they knock out. A week passes and we see that the turtles have still had no luck in finding Splinter. The turtles fear that he could be dead by this point, but we do see Leonardo say that they will never stop searching for him. One night, the turtles go out to get some exercise. Jumping across rooftops, the turtles banter with each other. It's almost like they have forgotten their worries, at least for a little bit. They stop on one of the rooftops to take a breather. They discuss how it's nice to be up above and not down below in the sewers. But as they talk, we see that they're actually being surrounded by foot soldiers. We haven't seen the foot since Shredder's death in issue 1, so this is a big moment, they're back. A fight breaks out, the Foot Clan yells out for the Shredder as they throw Ninja Stars at the Turtles. Donatello blocks the Ninja Stars with his bow staff and yells back for Splinter. The fight continues, and not before long, the Turtles do end up winning, the fight is over, but because of the whole fight, the Turtles are now on a different part of the rooftop, they now sit across from a building with the initials TCRI on it. This shocks the Turtles, these are the initials that were on the canister of ooze that mutated them 15 years ago. The turtles want to go inspect the building, but Leonardo points out that Michelangelo got hurt during the fight with the Foot Clan. He has a pretty bad cut on his arm. Leonardo says that they better go patch him up and return the following night. The turtles then end up going back home with April. The next night, the Turtles return to the TCRI building. They realize that the building doesn't have any doors on the sides or the back, or any windows anywhere. They contemplate climbing the building, but they can't, because Michelangelo got his arm hurt during the fight with the foot soldiers. And so we see one of the Turtles kicks open a door to one of the neighboring buildings. The Turtles run up the staircases and end up tightrope walking from that neighboring building to the TCRI building. Once on the roof of the TCRI building, Donatello is able to unlock the access door the turtles sneak in. Inside the building is very bizarre. Long hallways with nothing in them, empty rooms. You can see some technology and writing in some areas that looks like nothing of this earth. The turtles continue to sneak around. At one point, Donatello finds an ID card with strange writing on it, but as he does, the turtles begin to hear someone is coming, and so they go for cover. It's two men in TCRI gear, but as we saw with Splinter earlier, there's more than meets the eye here. The turtles hide as the two TCRI guys wait for their elevator. When they leave, the the turtles continue snooping. They explore different floors of the building. Then they enter a floor where all the rooms are locked, and as they're exploring this floor, the turtles again hear that someone's coming. But since all the rooms are locked, they have nowhere to hide. And so, in a last ditch effort, Donatello uses the ID card that he found earlier to open one of the doors. It works. The turtles enter the room and close the door behind them. Although, when the turtles turn around, they are shocked at what they see in the room. It's Splinter, and he's in some type of a tube and hooked up to a bunch of machinery. The turtles freak out. Raphael even begins to cry. He thinks Splinter is dead. Raph goes to break the tube that he's in, but Donatello holds him back. He tells Raphael that Splinter isn't dead. As all this is happening, by the way, the Utroms are alerted that there are intruders in the building. We see during this part that the Utroms' robot bodies are fully exposed here. They don't have those human disguises on that we saw earlier. The Utroms end up storming into the room where the turtles are, and they have their weapons drawn. Although before they went into the room, you did hear them say to each other to set 
their weapons to a quarter charge. Anyways, they charge in and they tell the turtles to drop their weapons, but Leonardo says no way, and the turtles begin attacking the Utrams. A small battle breaks out, and we see that the turtles fight the Utrams for a little bit, but don't know what to make of them. Donatello says that they need to find an exit. They enter another nearby room, which one of the Utrams calls a translocation matrix chamber. The turtles are eventually cornered again in this room, and you see that the Utrams do not want them by the machines that are in there. They tell the turtles to step away from it, but Leonardo tells the rest of the turtles not to listen, that the machine must be important, and could be the only thing saving them at the moment. This standoff though can't last forever, and so Michelangelo tells Leonardo that he sees a door across the room, that it could be an exit. Michelangelo tells the rest of the turtles to make a break for it, that he will hold off the Utrams. It's a hard decision, but the turtles agree, and they begin to walk across the machine to get to the door on the other side of the room. Meanwhile, Michelangelo jumps up to grab some cables to flip over the Utrams and attack them from behind. As he grabs the cables, because of his injury, he slips and he falls onto a control panel. This is the control panel for the machine that the turtles are walking across. This activates it, and something begins to happen to the turtles. They all begin to glow, and then they start fading away. Michelangelo thinks something bad is happening to them, and he breaks free from the grasps of the Utrams and joins his brothers. But what happens next is actually another major moment in Ninja Turtles history. The very first time ever that the Ninja Turtles met the Fugitoid. But we'll have to discuss that moment in a separate video. For now, that does it for this one. That was the first time the Turtles had a deal with the Utrams. Thanks everybody for watching. Make sure to check out our Mirage Comics playlist here on the channel to see more breakdowns of big moments from this continuity specifically. We also have other playlists where we break down other big moments from from different continuities as well. Leave your comments down below, subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you in a little bit with another video. Take care.